Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Joliet. I am Bo Mircha, Associate Pastor here, and it is my great honor to welcome you into worship. Worship is one of those unique moments for us where heaven and earth comes and meets and spends time together. In worship, who we are is met by the eternal God. In worship, who we are is transformed by the Spirit of God. And in worship, we let our lives speak back thanksgiving to the Almighty Creator. It is a special time for us. So I invite you now to come with an open heart and worship. Would you pray with me? Lord, we want to thank you for this time when we get to meet and spend time with you. It is in this time, Lord, that our lives are transformed, that who we are is brought before you and accepted and loved. It is in this time, Lord, that your life penetrates our life and transforms who we are. So we pray, Lord, that through our prayers, that through our singing, through listening to your word, we can have that wonderful walk with you in the garden as it was in the beginning of the creation. So Lord, walk with us in this hour. In your name we pray, amen. It is time to worship. Let us worship. God is with you.
I think of the church as a community, I think of how we are the body of Christ together and how we care for one another. We bear our sorrows together, we share our joys, we do ministry and mission together as the body of Christ. And so for our community time today, I'd like you to think with me about three things. First of all, we're going to be sending a mailing to all of our children in the congregation. So watch for the mailing to come in about a week to 10 days. It's in anticipation of Valentine's Day. We think of Valentine's Day, we think of love, and from our perspective of the church, we think about God's love for us, God's wonderful love and grace, and our love for Christ Jesus. In that mailing, the children will receive a treat, and there will also be some suggestions for a project to do, a response, and to return something to the church. And we hope that you'll return that to the church before we get to Valentine's Day. And then in February, on that Sunday, we'll share some of those things with you. So we're looking forward to the children receiving a mailing and how they will react to that mailing and share that with us. Second thing I want to encourage you to think about is the virtual Sunday school we have for our children. We'd love to have your child participate in virtual Sunday school, and if you want to do that, you need to get in touch with the office. The office will send you a code so that you can access the virtual Sunday school platform. And then uh, each week, as you receive an email on the worship services with the links that are in that email, you'll also receive a link for virtual Sunday school. And with that code, you'll be able to access our virtual Sunday school platform. And then finally, I encourage you to think about our treasurer, Tracy Norris. Tracy Norris has served the church for some 23 years and done a wonderful, wonderful job as our part-time treasurer. Tracy now has taken a full-time position and will be leaving us, and we are sad to see Tracy go. We are so grateful for all of her faithful work and her partnership uh, in the church over these years. And we want to provide a gift for Tracy. You'll receive a mailing in about a week's time, and in that mailing there will be an envelope for a thank you gift to Tracy. And if you would like to, to give, then you use that offering envelope so that we can thank Tracy with a gift from the whole congregation. And now for time with children, I'm going to put on my coat and I'm going outside in the snow. It's so much fun to get out in the snow sometimes. So watch, I'll have my coat on in a moment.
Hi everybody, gather the kids around for a time with children. I decided I just needed to go outside today because you can see it's snowing and the snow's really coming down and when the snow's coming down it's really fun to go outside. So boys and girls I hope that you had a chance to go outside today and here you can see around the church see all that snow that's coming down. I wonder if you can count the snowflakes. I don't think I can count the snowflakes. There are so many of them coming down and when I get out in the snow and I look at all the snowflakes coming down it just brings me joy but I think about how each and every snowflake is unique each and every snowflake is different each snowflake is different from all the rest as I think about you boys and girls I think about how you are made different God created us in his image he created men and women male and female all of us in his image and he's created us differently each of us has different gifts and talents and abilities each of us is very specially made the Psalms tell us in Psalm 139 that we are wonderfully and fearfully made by God so when you have a chance to look out at the snow coming down and get out and see the snowflakes fall to the ground and think how special it is that God makes each one differently think about how God has made you special and different and unique in such a good and wonderful way. Please pray with me now. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the snows that you create in fall and how wonderful it is to go outside and see all the snowflakes. We thank you that you have made us in your image and we are wonderfully made. And so as we look and see other people, help us to know how special how wonderful each and every person is. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I hope you get to go out and play in the snow today. It's a great day to be outside. Bye now. I'll see you again. Wasn't it so much fun to go out in the snow and see the snowflakes coming down and be outside for a little bit? Now we're back here together in worship and I want to think with you about our offering time. The scriptures tell us in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 that we are imitators of God. We can be imitators of God. How is that so? God gave his one and only son, Christ Jesus, to us. God gives us his grace. God gives to us in love. And when we give in love, we become imitators of God in Jesus. When we give in love, we allow God's love and grace to flow through us to others in the life, ministry, and mission of the church, in the congregation, in the community, and even to the entire world. So I encourage you now to give in love and be an imitator of God. There are three ways that we can give at First Presbyterian Church. We can send in our offerings through the mail. We can go to the website and use the Give tab, or we can set up electronic giving with our treasurer, Tracy Norris. However you give, give in love, give in grace. Be an imitator of God. Let us give, and let us continue our worship.
Please pray with us. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. A time for everything. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time for search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi friends. I think it's safe to say that it's been yet another unsettling week and it's very likely the week ahead of us is going to be unsettling. But it's during times like this that it's important that we be reminded about who God is, about how he is always, always with us. He's with us when we pray. He's with us as we go through our day-to-day -day lives. When we come together in a corporate prayer, meaning when we all pray at the same time, God is with us as a church. And when we pray individually or in our family groups or our friend groups, God is with us then as well. God does not abandon his people, no matter what's going on or how we are feeling. God loves us, and God is with us. And so it's with those thoughts that I invite you to just, just take a breath. Take a breath and, and just focus your heart on God. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray about the pandemic. We're going to pray about the strife in the country. We're going to pray the prayers that we each hold near and dear to our hearts. And as we pray, I want you to just remember and hold on to the fact that God is with us, that Jesus Christ was born and that he died and rose again, that the Spirit resides within each of God's people. Now friends, will you please pray with me? Father, we thank you that we are not alone. We thank you for, for the beauty of this earth and all of the good things that you have created. We ask, Lord, even as we thank you for your blessings, that you would um, just cover us with your peace, that you would remind us daily that we are not alone, that we are ultimately safe in your loving arms. Father, we pray for those who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic those who have lost loved ones, those who are sick, those who have been sick and continue to experience symptoms. We pray, Father, for those who are lonely, who are quarantined at home without loved ones around them, without the usual ebb and flow of their day. And Father, we pray not just for those who are, are ill or affected by the pandemic, but for those who are ill um, with any ailment, whether it be physical or emotional. We pray, God, for the first responders, for the caregivers and care providers, that you would endow them with patience and peace, that for those who are in the hospital and alone, we ask, Lord, that you would send people of faith and kindness into their rooms to offer them care. We pray, God, for, for this world right now. There's so much strife and struggle going on everywhere. And we pray, Lord, for, for the people that are experiencing hardship all the way around the world from us. 
that your presence would be with them. We know, Lord, that you love your people. We know, Lord, that you are present here with us even as our own country undergoes turmoil and strife. So we pray, God, as this week goes on, that, that there be no violence, that dialogue replace shouting, that love replace hate. And even as we pray these things, Lord, we confess that sometimes we are complicit in the problem, either by our words or by our silence, or even sometimes, Lord, by our thoughts, our attitudes. So Father, if we have been um, part of the problem, we pray that you would forgive us and that you would empower us to move forward, to be salt and light and peace in this world that you have created. We know, Lord, that when we confess our sins, that you are so good to forgive us. Father, thank you. Thank you for our blessings. Thank you for our peace. Thank you for the gift of your son. And now, Father, as we continue our time of prayer together, we lift to you the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May peace be with you this week, my friends.
As we are opening the scriptures today, let us pray. Lord, we ask that you will speak to us today through your word and let our hearts find strength, wisdom, and peace from you so we, your people, can do your will. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Jesus was speaking to the crowds throughout the day, and at the end of the day, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So leaving the crowd, be, the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other, other boats with him. A furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord for God's people. Thanks be to God. Today's sermon is about being brave in the middle of the storm. We all have our own definition of what it means to be brave. If I was to ask you to think about a time and a place in history that defines bravery, what comes to mind? For me, there are a few moments in time in history that speaks about bravery. One is this picture that was captured at the end of the Battle of Iwo Jima, planting that flag on top of, of the mountain. It was such a powerful picture and message. Or the march on Selma, a time to speak truth about equality, or the picture of the little ruby bridges going to a white school as a person of color, surrounded by a team of, team of U.S. Marshals because she had garbage thrown at her, or this picture of simple people fighting the communist regime in Romania in 1989. For me, these are people and acts of extreme courage, people that raised above their circumstances and made their mark in the history books. But how about the rest of us, the ones that wake up every day praying and hoping for an hoping for an uneventful day, or maybe for enough strength to get to the end of the day. Or the parents that every day pray that they can be a better parent to their children. Or the ones struggling every day with insecurity, anxiety, or depression. What does bravery look for someone like that? This past week, in the light of everything happening in our country, I found myself filled with anxiety and a lot of questions. And I'm sure you can relate to. And as many, many of you, I turned to prayer. I called some of my friends and I listened to their own concerns. I opened my social media and read 
a lot of things. I browse one of the pastor's group forums that I belong and I was overwhelmed by this feeling of despair. But also at the same time, I was reminded of today's passage. A group of followers of Jesus caught, caught up in the middle of the storm. The disciples do not get enough credit for who they are at this time. And many times this passage is seen in a negative light. I think we need to spend a little time trying to understand the context of this passage and who the disciples are at this point in time. Mark captures this story at the beginning at Jesus' ministry, a short time after Jesus called the twelve. The disciples' experience with Jesus is very limited at this time. In a way, they are in their honeymoon uh, phase of their apprenticeship with Jesus. They are fascinated by his words, by the effect he has on people, as, as well as all the things that they witness. They are discovering who Jesus is. Their faith is growing little by little but they don't really fully understand or comprehend who Jesus is. The disciples themselves are an interesting group of people. Andrew, Peter, James, and John, fishermen. Matthew, a tax collector. Simon, the, the zealot, a politician of some kind, or a revolutionary, if you want, fighting against the Romans. Judas, Philip, Bartholomew, Bartholomew, Thomas, Thaddeus, and James. We don't know much about their occupation, but we know they were chosen to be part of the group. Why is this important to us today? Because it shows people from all walks of life who left everything they had to follow Jesus of Nazareth, the one that John the Baptist spoke about as the one that God sent to bring the world closer to him. It is in this boat in the middle of the Sea of Galilee that we find ourselves. We find the church today. Simple people with different paths in life following the radical teachings of Jesus believing that God is present in our world in ways we cannot see at times, and believing that if we are to embrace his teachings, we can change the whole world. Let's get back to the gospel reading. As they were crossing the sea, a furious storm came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping. The disciples wake him up and say to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? There is no description of their bravery or, the, or of the skillful display of sailing from the four fishermen that knew the Sea of Galilee. There is only one cry that is heard. Teacher, don't you care? Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Such a hard thing to hear. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Can you hear those words for us today? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? You see, faith is the important part of the story. It is not faith in their skill or their knowledge 
of what they bring in the boat. It is skill, it is faith in the one who is on the boat. At the end of the story, they look at each other and still in their faith or lack of faith, say to, to one another, who is Jesus? Who is this person that we follow? Faith, the right type of faith in the right place. It is what bravery looks like. Faith for them is bravery. Standing before Jesus in the middle of the storm and asking for his help is bravery. Have you, have you ever wondered what stops us today for doing just that? Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 speaks, speaks to, to that very thing. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Greek word that Paul uses in Philippians 4 was merimnate which can be translated as either needless anxiety or genuine concern. The way we experience life can be described as waves of anxiety or concern rolling in and out of our lives. It is our response to these waves that will de determine the outcome to our circumstances. So how are we going to be brave? I think we need to start with our words. We need to be brave with our words. The words we speak and think can, can and will create anxiety. The scripture describes words as the creative power of God. The Bible is the word of life. And our words can create an atmosphere of peace or anxiety. Ephesians 5.19 tells us that as people of God, as, as the church, we should speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Why? Because those are words of life, words of hope, words that will create and bring life. It is hard for me to see good people, friends, church-going people arguing and speaking words that are filled with destruction. I have said it, said it before, I miss seeing you on Sunday or having lunch together or talking face to face. Because there is so much strength in the fellowship that we have like that. And when people are together, things are different. And while I miss Sunday mornings, the thing that has not changed is that we're still people of faith. People that are on the same boat because of the call we have in our lives. And while Sunday morning looks so different, we still can use our words to encourage, to be brave in our words in a way that will change the world. It takes courage from us as people of faith to speak words of faith. Be brave in your approach. When the waves of the sea came crashing against the boat, there was no time for the disciples to argue, to blame each other for the lack of skill or direction they were going or for the lack of foresight. 
Can you imagine what would have happened on the boat if the disciples would start arguing with one another and saying, I thought you knew how to steer this boat. And somebody else saying, well, you should have known the storm is coming. Could have looked at the sky and see the, the clouds. There was no time for blame. There was no time for argument. They were on a boat that was about to be crushed. But they had one thing in common, and that was the person that brought them there. It was faith that had them on the boat. And it is faith that was going to get them out of that boat. Earlier in the service, we heard the words of the, of the Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven. A time to build, a time to destroy, a time to cry, a time to laugh. There is a time for everything. And this past week, we had many voices echo the same call to us. This is our time to come as one people and stand united as one. Let us be brave and remember, we are on the same boat in the middle of the storm. There is no time for blame. There is no time for inner fighting. There is time for us to turn to Christ. Be brave in the things that feed you. I recently came across a cartoon on Facebook that I want to share with you. It is a sheep complaining about not hearing from the shepherd. Every day we get caught up in watching and following the news on one network or the other. And we forget to listen to that one voice that is the most important to us, the voice of Jesus that reminds us that while we are sinners, flawed people, we are also saved by grace. It is that voice that speaks to us to encourage us to be generous, to give of who we are. It is that voice of Jesus that encourages us to treat one another with dignity and to be peacemakers. But it takes bravery to listen to that voice. Because whenever we do, we'll be asked to change the way we see things and the way we do things. Be brave and let Jesus speak into your life before anything else. When Jesus spoke to the disciples, the storm, calm down. What if Jesus can speak to our fear before anything else? Be brave in what you listen to. And lastly, be brave in your prayer. It is time for, for the church to be once again the place of prayer. By now, most of us have a home office, a me place, a place where we go and find our solitude, where we exercise, some of us, or we read or spend time apart from every, everybody else. It is time for us to turn that place into a place of prayer. It is time for us to be people of prayer. Prayer that, that, that is more than a thought we have in passing when we hear something else on the news or when we talk with a friend. Something more than, Lord, bless this thing and move on. I'm talking about prayer that moves mountains. Prayer that is so loud, so powerful that calms the storm. I wish from the bottom of my heart that each of one, each one of you listening to today's sermons know 
knows who Jesus is. And I pray that your faith is strong enough to help you run to him and shake the heavens. I pray that us, the people of God, can pray like never before and that the storm that we are in will hear the words of Jesus. Be still. Today we are called to be brave. And I know that looks different than the pictures I shared with you at the beginning of the sermon. Being brave today is about remembering God's faithfulness, being brave in speaking God's promises, being brave in believing in standing for what the kingdom of God stands for. Paul speaks to Timothy and encourages him encourages him to be brave and says to him, God gave you, God gave us a spirit that does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. It's time for us to be brave as people of faith. May God give us his strength and his blessing today and in the days to come. Would you pray with me? Lord, indeed, we pray that you will calm the storm. But even more so, we pray, Lord, that you will help us see you in the middle of the storm. We pray for faith that will help us move the mountains. We pray for faith that will make us brave. We we'll pray for faith that will help us stand for what the kingdom of God is. Help us, Lord, to be the people of faith that you see in us. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us continue our worship. Amen. Let me bring your love Where there is injury Your pardon, Lord And where there's doubt True faith in you Make me a channel of your peace where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see. So much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. That we are pardoned in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life, and in dying that we're born to eternal